Welcome to Dateline SEU, your source for the latest news and sports from St. Ambrose University. I'm Sierra Mari. And I'm Abigail Varkalis. A current St. Ambrose University vice president is leaving SAU to become the president at another university. Sandy Cassidy will become the first woman and first lay person to head up Rockhurst University in Kansas City, Missouri. She has served as the vice president for strategic initiatives and dean of the College of Health and Human Services at St. Ambrose. She came to SAU in 1994 as a faculty member in the physical therapy department. Cassidy will take over the presidency at Rockhurst on July 1st. Mardi Gras is a celebration leading up to the Lenten season, and this past weekend, St. Ambrose Campus Ministry joined in the fun. They held an event in the Beehive where students could put on beads, wear carnival masks, and socialize with their fellow students. They could also watch the movie, The Princess and the Frog. Attendees were invited to try traditional Mardi Gras foods, such as king cake and cinnamon rolls. A spicy gumbo was also available for those feeling a little more adventurous. The observance of Lent started this week with Ash Wednesday. St. Ambrose Campus Ministry marked the day with three Masses in Christ the King Chapel. Ash Wednesday not only indicates the beginning of the Lenten season, it is often used as a time for people to better themselves, to reflect, and to ask for forgiveness. Specifically, here at St. Ambrose, I mean, we'll, we'll be doing, through Campus Ministry and through a variety of our student organizations, different things for us as a community to be involved in. However, um, more specifically or to the point in the midst of our community, what I hope or what I desire most for the Lenten season is really to be a time whereby we recommit ourselves to each other. The Lenten season marks the start of the 40 days leading up to Holy Week, ending with Easter Sunday on April 17th. St. Ambrose students with a passion for research and wanting to prepare for the professional world have a unique opportunity to join the Honors Program. The Honors Research Experience lets sophomores and juniors who want to dive deeper into their major do so, with help from the faculty from various departments throughout SAU. So it's a way to enter into the program in the community, but most importantly you get to um, engage in independent research. So you are actually putting together a thesis project and you get to carry it out from proposal to the actual finish and then present it. Fenn says that the program is unique because it is interdisciplinary. Unlike the capstone projects required by different majors, students in the honors research experience can look at their thesis from different angles. We are requiring students to look at a problem from two different disciplines. And so that kind of opens up the idea of multiple perspectives, which is a great way to approach the world, thinking about how can I see things from multiple viewpoints and solve problems from multiple viewpoints. Interested students can apply for the Honors Reach Experience by going to sau.edu backslash honors program to fill out an application. They will also find a general interest survey and will be asked to attach a letter of recommendation from a faculty member. The deadline for applications for fall entry is April 1st. A blood drive was held on campus Tuesday in the Rogalski Center Ballroom. It was hosted by the Campus Activities Board. CAB worked to encourage members of the St. Ambrose community to make an appointment online, but walk-ins were welcomed. Because blood and plasma donations have a shelf life, donors have the opportunity to donate every 56 days to help meet the continuous need for blood in the United States. So it's kind of just, you know, keeping that in the pipeline and keeping those um, ready to go for those times when a patient needs it because we never know when somebody you know they don't wake up in the morning knowing that they're going to need blood that day so that's why it's so important that donors give give as often as they can or they're willing um, and why we do so many blood drives you know on a daily basis or weekly basis those who donated at this week's drive received a voucher to redeem for a feeling lucky t-shirt or a gift card for more information about upcoming blood drives or to learn how to donate you can visit bloodcenter.org in honor of Women's History Month, an organization for college women, her campus, and the Student Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office have teamed up to present a display titled, A Celebration of Women. This is a traveling exhibit designed by members of her campus that highlights women from SAU and abroad, and significant events that have impacted women throughout history. A Celebration of Women will be displayed in various places across campus for the month of March. Three St. Ambrose University faculty members teamed up for a multimedia concert last week, featuring music and photography. Winter Raza is a song cycle for voice and piano, written by 
Franz Schubert, published in 1828. Music faculty members baritone Nathan Wint and pianist Marion Lee performed the work in a recital on Friday. They were accompanied by the photographs of SEU art faculty member Randall Richmond. The performance was part of the music department's Casual Classics, a series of free Friday concerts. After a hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the admissions office is once again offering incoming students the opportunity to experience campus in an overnight visit. Admissions events and visitor coordinator Grayson Schreiner says that these events are great opportunities for incoming students to get a feel for what student life is like. I think one of our more fun events that we have because it gives students the opportunity to actually see what it's like to be a student here on campus, a current student. So they get to come stay overnight. We have a pizza party here in the admissions office and then they're kind of off on their own with whoever their ambassador host is um, to do anything fun that they want to do. CAB typically holds an event um, on those Sundays so it's a lot of fun for them to interact with even more current students than just who they're staying with. Only two overnight events remain this year. Interested incoming students can sign up online at sau.edu under the Visit tab. Current first-year students interested in becoming an admissions ambassador can apply through the My SAU link. Coming up after a short break, the St. Ambrose Dance and Cheerleading teams host regional competition with a return to nationals at stake. And we'll show you highlights as the women's lacrosse team opens its season with the first of four straight games at home. We'll have these stories and more coming up after the break. On Dateline SAU. Right away, once I got to Ambrose, I was involved. I was on the newspaper. I was working in the broadcasting with the Ambrose television and news production. And through all of those different experiences, I really learned a lot about myself. And I really learned all kinds of skills that I still use today. And I'm, I'm really excited and proud that I still use all those skills today. And most of that foundational knowledge came from Ambrose in those classes. than a radio station. We're your neighbors, investing time in our community. We're mentors, guiding the next generation of broadcasters. We're supporters of veterans, partners with social service agencies, and investigators of history. We're dedicated sports fans. We're committed to the stories that make the Quad Cities unique. We are KALA Radio, 88.5 FM, 106.1 FM. Turn it on, turn it up.
The St. Ambrose women's lacrosse team opened their season Wednesday night when they played host to the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse Eagles at the St. Vincent Center Athletic Complex. Down 2 0 early, the Bees get their offense started when Audrey Warner scores the team's first goal of the season. Then, nearing the end of the first quarter, it's Maddie Wiltrout with the score, and the fans are energized. Moving to the second period, Sarah Deal finds the back of the net to put St. Ambrose ahead by three. And then with the first half clock winding down, Lauren Hosley scores from a, a tough angle with just one second left on the clock, and the Bees go on to win their first, their first game 20-14. St. Ambrose scored nine goals in the fourth quarter to keep the Eagles at bay. Warner led the way with seven goals as five Bs found the scoring column. The team will now remain at home for their next three contests. The St. Ambrose dance team will get their chance to defend the nas its national title next week. They earned that right by winning the NAIA Northeast Regional Dance Championship last week. The Bees posted the best two rounds in the nine-team event in which they hosted in Lee Loman Arena. This is SAU's 10th overall regional crown in the last 12 years, and they have won this region six of the last seven years. Nationals will be March 11th and 12th in East Plante, Michigan. The St. Ambrose cheer squad came up just short of a regional title. They placed second in the NAIA Northeast Regional Qualifier last weekend in Lee Loman Arena. The Bees will still get to be one of the 15 teams to compete at Nationals as they received an at-large berth. The men's volleyball team quickly took care of business Tuesday when they swept Roosevelt University at Lee Loman Arena. The Bees have now won two in a row and are four and nine on the season and three and four in the CCAC. The St. Ambrose softball team split two games last Saturday in the Ambrose Dome Tournament. The Bees could manage just one hit in an opening loss to a nationally ranked Mount Mercy. Then it was B pitching that allowed just one hit as St. Ambrose knocked off Mount Marty in the nightcap. The Bees had another split the following day, dropping a 10-2 decision to Mount Marty before defeating Waldorf in the final game. That win was Coach Ron Farrell's 300th victory at St. Ambrose. The team moves to 6-3 and three on the year. They will not play again until their spring break trip to Florida in a few weeks. The Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference announced its postseason basketball honors on Monday, and there are some Bs at the top of this list. On the women's team, junior forward Kyrie Robleski earned first team all CCAC, while Jane Prestigard earned second team all conference. The team also received the league's champion of character award for the fourth time in the past five years. On the men's squad, senior Tom Kazanagi earned second team all CCAC. He led the Bees in scoring and rebounding this past season. Grant Mason, a 6'2 forward from Chicago, was named to the all CCAC freshman team. And that's it for sports this week. I'm Elijah Jakovic. And that's all we have for you on this edition of Dateline SAU. We'll be back next week with the latest news and sports from St. Ambrose University. Remember to check out the SAU TV Facebook and Instagram pages for our newscasts, late breaking news, and more. You can also find news stories and videos on The Hive at sauthebuzz.com. The study abroad program at St. Ambrose University is an opportunity for students to travel and experience foreign cultures. With the next Rome Study Abroad meeting set for March 17th, we asked students around campus about their dream study abroad destinations. We'll leave you with their responses. Thanks for watching. See you next week. I would probably go to Italy because wine is cheaper than water and also like history and stuff. It'd be cool. Somewhere in Australia, I've always wanted to go down under. Honestly, probably uh, Ireland. Uh, my buddy, actually my roommate's talking about studying abroad in Ireland and uh, just seems pretty cool. I have some family down there, so it'd be, it'd be interesting. I don't know, I'd go to like Italy because my mom went there before. It looked cool. I would study in France because I've always wanted to learn French and I think that it'd be a cool place. 
to live. I would probably go to Italy because I went there in high school and I found it really interesting and I'd like to go back to learn more. Myself, I'm from Puerto Rico, so maybe maybe somewhere in South America, maybe, maybe in Puerto Rico because I'm more familiar with the area. I would go to Ireland because I've already been and it was beautiful and I'd like to go back. Tokyo. Why? Tokyo's dope. Tokyo Drift.